action, period three. Here comes our neurotransmitter. <laughs> Woo! Now we're in resting stage. All the gates are closed. Oh, on the threshold, sodium gates slowly start to open. <laughs> on to depolarization, where the sodium gates fully open. On to repolarization, where now the potassium gate slowly opens and sodium gates are completely closed. Now on to undershoot, where the potassium gate fully opens. Woo! Gates quickly close. And now, look at sodium. They're so sad. And negative. And potassium. They're so positive and happy. Woo! The end. You're on. Now the sodium potassium pump regulates back to resting as three um, potassiums go or two potassiums go in and three sodiums go out. <laughs> that was Nikki the narrator. Hello. And action. These are two cells and this is the axon. When you plug the cord into the next cell, it's creating a synapse which is a gap junction between two nerve cells and neurotransmitters like serotonin go through the synapse into the next cell and transfer the action potential. All right, resting state. Are you ready? Yeah. Sodium gates open. Threshold. Omar passes along the happy face, which represents serotonin to Heather. Here, I represent the dendrites of the postsynaptic cell, or the target cell. Serotonin will bind to a receptor protein and activate an ion gate, which will then allow specific ions, like sodium and potassium, to enter or leave the cell. This will change the chemical signal into an electrical signal. 
Now remember, cells may either be a chemical signal, such as neurotransmitters, or electrical signals. This is a good time for Ross to explain how sodium and potassium ions will create an electrical signal in the nerve cell. Well, thank you, but I think my two D should explain the symbols, the resting potential, and all the other stuff to the audience. I've done enough work for this six-week grading period. Now Swetha comes out and pretends to be an inactive nerve cell. Omar takes out his voltmeter and measures the voltage of Swetha. A cell that's not carrying a signal is inactive and will be at resting potential. We can measure the membrane potential of the electrical charge across the plasma membrane using this voltmeter. Since the inside of the cell has lots of anions, which are a minus, um, since some potassium ions and very little sodium ions, then the membrane potential will be 70, negative 70. As we discussed earlier, ion channels will either respond to neurotransmitters or changes in membrane potential by opening their gates. A reduction in voltage, meaning the value becomes more positive, is called depolarization. Let's watch Simon and Yaren enthusiastically demonstrate this depolarization process. Simon and I will be a chemically gated ion channel, or sodium gate, located at the dendrite membrane. When I am stimulated, I will open to allow sodium ions into the cell, increasing the voltage inside the cell. However, the potassium gates are still closed. When a sufficiently strong enough stimulus results in a particular voltage, the cell reaches threshold potential. Let's measure the voltage right now. Uh, Erica measures the voltage of Yaren and sees that he's shaking violently. His voltage has not reached threshold, meaning that he is still too negative, around negative 60 volts. Uh, after some more sodium ions pass through Yaren and Simon, uh, Erica measures Simon and sees that he isn't shaking violently, meaning his voltage is around negative 50 MV. Uh, the nerve cell has reached threshold. Now action potential is triggered by the threshold. Remember that depolarization occurs in the cell body or dendrites and the action potential is only generated in the axon and that the action potential of an axon is the nerve impulse. Uh, now Ross joins the group because Brick has just walked in the door and saw that he was doing nothing. <laughs> the students form serotonin and or sodium and potassium gates. Immediately after action potential follows repolarization. This is when sodium ions are kept out of the cell and potassium ions flow out of the cell. This action causes the cell to become more negative on the inside and positive on the outside. Then all sodium gates close, but the potassium gates close slowly, causing undershoot or an increase in negativity. <laughs> Finally, the electrical signal that started with the action potential moves to the next region of the axon by depolarizing its name. The sodium-potassium pump returns the cell to resting potential by pumping sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell. <laughs> and the narrator extraordinaire. Yay, very nice.